what kind of drink best embodies the Space Needle? Have you ever wondered why the Space Needle looks the way it does? I feel like Vanna White. in 1962. Seattle wanted an event that would put it on the map. Everybody's planning to see Seattle's spectacular $100 million World's Fair. A group of Seattle uh, business people knew that World's Fairs needed to have an iconic structure, and they wanted to build the space age equivalent of the Eiffel Tower. Easier thought of than executed. <laughs> the chairman of the World's Fair Committee went on a trip to Stuttgart, Germany, and there he saw a tower that had a restaurant and observation deck on it. It looked kind of like a needle. And he came back and he proposed this idea to the fair executives. The company they went to was John Graham and Associates. Graham and his guys began doing sketches. This was uh, the starting point, but it went through many, many iterations. And one of the things that Graham became very interested in was making sure that the Space Needle had a flying saucer looking top. He'd say, more disc, more disc, make it disky. The very first object called a flying saucer was sighted at Mount Rainier in the late 1940s. They needed a final design. Nothing pleased Graham. So he hired another local architect to work for him, a guy named Victor Steinberg. He had a wooden sculpture called the Feminine One which was an abstract sculpture of a dancer reaching up to the sky. And that was their breakthrough design. So the artifact that we have today is a time capsule. And in uh, 1982, for the 20th anniversary of the Space Needle, the staff asked Jack Graham to recreate in his own hand his original concept. The Space Needle for people, it embodied a very bright future made better by science and technology. It was a kind of attitude that inspired Star Trek. It was a kind of attitude that said, somehow in space, people are going to be better than they are here on Earth. Imagine, at the same time the Space Needle was being built, literally, the Berlin Wall was being built. And so there's another interesting message there about what kind of society are you going to live in? Are you going to live in a society where they're building walls? Or are you going to live in a society where we're building platforms to see a brighter future? And so there was an interesting kind of subtle, almost propaganda element to it, but it also reflected, I think, Seattle's positivity about the future.